Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the LodgeCast experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to a deep fried Texas hot take. I'm Elijah Master with me as always is Brother Bishki. Grizzly. We got Brother Lucas. The buzzsaw is back. And joining us for this trip down memory lane and into requel territory. <laughs> emphasis on the reek. Oof. We got Brother Josh. Hey. And Brother Ben. This is about trauma. you guys willingly watched a movie called texas chainsaw massacre not the texas chainsaw massacre this is a sequel to the texas chainsaw massacre called texas chainsaw massacre with the exact same runtime, 83 minutes. 83 minutes is why we are doing this film tonight 50 years later. That Ten, ten more minutes and I've said no. <laughs> like ten more minutes and we'd be like, why the fuck would we cover that? 83 <laughs> minutes? Ooh, that's the right price. So before we get into what we just witnessed. How do you get the protein as quick as possible into the bloodstream? A little schnapps. From Rotten Tomatoes, Melody, Sarah Yarkin, her teenage sister, Lilla, Elsie Fisher and their friends, Dante, Jacob Lattimore, and Ruth Nell Hudson head to the remote town of Harlow, Texas to start an idealistic new business venture. <clears throat> but their dream soon turns into a waking nightmare when they accidentally disrupt the home of Leatherface, the deranged serial killer whose blood-soaked legacy continues to haunt the area's residents, including Sally Hardesty, Owen Forer, the sole <laughs> survivor of the infamous 1973 massacre who's hell-bent on Jesus. seeking revenge. You wrap it up already? Period. <laughs> Schnapps is longer than the movie. Literally Jesus. what I was about to say. Right. So it's clearly, clearly the Halloween requel model where you bring back the survivor, and it's the same actress, right? No, it's, it's no, not. It's, it's not? No, no. So oh. we don't even have that? No, we don't even have that. We have a title, and that's pretty much it. Oh, we have the lady Damn. from Mandy. And 90% this, title. This movie was not shot in Texas. Is that correct? Shot in Bulgaria. <laughs> yeah. Sam Elliott's <laughs> wow. going to have a problem. That's with right. It. <laughs> shot in Bulgaria. And how many times have they tried to reboot and remake this shit? Even searching on Netflix where this movie is, where it lives. You come up with like Texas Chainsaw 3D, Texas Chainsaw 2012 or 2002 well, or that's the thing, is, is what we had the original cycle which was what like almost three or four sequels? it was four movies the original cycle was four movies four movies yes. then you had the michael bay reboot in yes. like 2002 which Platinum was like Dunes. the michael bay Platinum. reboot is like citizen kane compared to this compared movie. to this yes yeah. i agree i actually quite enjoy that and then there was a pre it was like texas chainsaw massacre the beginning right which is also platinum dunes right then which i never saw there was like a weird line 3d gate, 3d which i also never saw yeah and now there's this and now there's this which is a direct sequel to the 1973 right. version. I'm right. pretty sure they wiped out everything else. It's called yeah. a retcon. It's a retcon requel. John, John Larroquette is back for the opening narration, though. It's John Larroquette again. But it lacks gravitas. It's rushed and it's yeah. forced. And well, it doesn't land. The way that they do it is they have it playing in like a gift shop. This this true crime documentary. <clears> and <throat> he's doing the same kind of narration in it. They just wanted to get him back in because he's still kicking. Another question we had was, how old is Leatherface? If this is set 
in the Tesla current time period. 1973, 50 years. He's probably <laughs> in his mid-20s. Mid, mid-20s, mid so he's probably about 75. Yeah, he is at least. the fastest, spryest, wiriest, 75-year-old, most aggressive, virile, yeah. horny yeah. killer. <laughs> horny for his mama. So the setup. The there is no setup. S- oh. No, there is. The setup of this movie. The influencers going to this ghost town. Yes. To start anew, to get away from the madness of the city and to start a utopia, an influencer utopia here. The madness of Austin. Oh, <laughs> it's absolutely infuriating to me. Oh, because like I hate with a passion, this model that new horror movies are doing where they feel the need to tack on the message yes. or the context. Yes. Because like famously like that, like that black Christmas reboot that came out. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I also yeah. never they, saw they, it's, it's so heavy handed. Well, yeah. so, and I feel like all these, all the, like the movies that they're trying to emulate do all this much better because yeah. they're doing it subtextually like yes. you know like the night of the living dead is about like dealing with like the 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 after effects of the vietnam war and you or, don't have to yell it yeah, while you're doing it it's there it's in the dna of this movie but it's not you have to throw a be- confederate flag up on yeah they don't it. need to have like the self-driving tesla and like the <laughs> weird like kind of like gentrification aspect of it all so can i just yeah. jump in here and say not to step on lt's bonus features but my bonus but as features. i understand but no but as i understand it there was originally a different director yeah and a different screenwriter i will i don't know how the credits washed out sure. here but as i understand it the whole crew is in belgrade shooting for like a full week or 10 days wow. and then legendary or netflix whoever it was came to them and said no 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 we have a new draft of the script. And yes. the director was like, and the director was like, no, 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 no. I did not agree to do this. Like critique. Sarah Connor. Well, I, he, as I understood it, he was specifically objecting to a bunch of like the zoomer oh. woke, like critique yeah. that's going on. He was just like, this is too on the nose. Fuck all of this. He I'm was not right. Into, I'm not, I'm not into <laughs> this. And that's what, yeah, rightfully the, so. I mean, because it, it really, it's really bad. It's just flat. Like it it's not scary. Not it's not funny. And it's when the gory. when the bus loads of people show up that are potential investors in this town, and they're all like taking selfies and being like, "Yeah, this is great," and they're having a little block party. None of those people have any lines. There's like one woman that has a name and some lines, and yeah. everybody else is just generally milling around, which leads me to believe that they were probably Bulgarian. Right. <laughs> oh, good call. Yeah. Because they don't have any lines. So that's the setup. And all of our main hero characters, these four young folks, they are so unlikable. Like, I would rather have brunch with Leatherface than with any of these people. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and we don't even know who the lead is because it cross cuts between like yeah. the characters until one by one they die. Like you even, think it's the girl from eighth grade. Right. Who unfortunately, this is what she chose to do. Oof. And it doesn't Gucci, help her at all. Gucci. Gucci. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, her character's having hurt. flashbacks hurt throughout hurt. of surviving a school shooting. Oh. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I would have quit over that. If I was the original director, it's like, it's like, why I'd be like, Oh, which, why? which, which flashbacks were in the original and all the other sequels? Oh, zero, none. Got it. So why the fuck are we having it in ours? And if we are, it's got to pay off in like such a big way. And it doesn't really, it's no. just, it's, again, it's like just pointless. It's just contrived. Yeah. It's all contrived. And it's just such a bummer. Like it's such a bummer. Such a bummer. I'm, like, I'm trying to have fun. Is anything watching... in this movie fun? No. Well, here's what I will say. I was kind of getting glimmers of what could have been. Sure. So the first the first kill. The first kill. Salad dragon. Salad dragon. Salad dragon. Hey, so the first kill. That's the test of a horror movie is what exactly happened with the first kill. We all screamed. We all screamed 
because it was a combination of disgusting and creative. So what's happening? I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into this plot. But Leatherface is trying to nurse his mom back to health in the back of a sheriff's van, and she's played by Alice Krieg, who. This is kind of just the roles she does now is the creepy matriarch character. Uh, I guess she's been doing it since sleepwalkers, but she passes away. Leatherface don't like that. And he decides to take it out on the poor hapless deputy that's in the back with him. From what I can recall, <laughs> the deputy <laughs> reaches his arm out to him to stop him from trying to inject his mom with a full tank of oxygen and Leatherface grabs his arm, bends it backwards so that the bones break out of the skin. And then he takes those bone shards and shoves them into the guy's neck. Mm. And then while mm. he's gurgling on his own blood, his gun goes off and shoots the dude driving the van, mm -hmm. thus plunging it into an accident. And it is, yeah. There's a glimmer of something there. It's exciting. It's cool looking. It just reminded me of like, you know, the early aughts with like the torture porn and the, yes. what, what was that? New French, new French extremity or high tension. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, it is so outrageously gory. Yes. That I was like, oh, it's transcendent. But, yeah, that, yeah. but that, but that scene confused me because I, even though I was awake, I was fully conscious. Oh, Lucas, my eyes glued to this big bright screen. Lucas couldn't believe for the life of him that, that Leatherface was in the back of this van. He's like, yeah, no, he's no. still in the house. No, because he's it, still in the house. The scene before that was the mom and the kid were at the bottom of the stairs. Cut to Leatherface at the top of the stairs. The mom goes, "Go back in your room." And then he then carries the cops her come out. in, and then the mom starts freaking out. And then all I see are the cops taking her out, putting her. A van and then all yeah. of a sudden like i'm going where's leatherface how come they're not talking about leatherface Lucas. didn't they see leatherface and like no one yeah, says anything there is no doubt this is a then all of a sudden leatherface is in movie. the van and yeah. i'm like the fucking cops are like oh let's just put him in the van like he's a this safe movie guy. commits a lot of sins but i watched leatherface get in the fucking Dude, van yeah. Lucas, well, you stroked I, out during that I, part I, I, it was and you probably, couldn't get over it probably a half second shot I yeah well i mean I, i'm with both of you because i remember <laughs> seeing the shot <laughs> of him <laughs> in the van yes. from outside yeah. and being like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Why is there a random old guy in the van I right think, now? I think we just can't accept how uncool it is that Leatherface is walking around in the daytime, like walking around. Like he shouldn't be doing that just, just yet, you know, like he should be hidden. He should have a creepier entrance, but alas, at least he starts killing soon enough and he cuts the face off of one, see, of one of the dudes. And that was like actually another kind of cool because the way that was shot is he's sort of out of focus in yep. the background and you see him doing something. And you, you see the girl like kind of looking at him through the side mirror. Yeah. And, and it's those glimmers where I was like, Oh, maybe this is why everyone signed up yeah. to do this. But in the field of dead sunflowers. Somebody got really excited over that imagery. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's cool, but to what end, really? But to what end? You know? What do we think of Leatherface's new mask? Mm. Eh. I thought it looked kind of dopey. You couldn't really see it. Yeah, he looked sad. It looked like a, a <laughs> melting, sad pumpkin that was left out in, like, early November, like, after Halloween's <laughs> yeah. long since passed. It looked, it kind of reminded me of one of the drawings from um, Scary Stories of Tell in the yes, Dark. Yes, yes. There's, like, that, that old woman. Yep drawing and i was like oh 100 and but not in a good way that's an unfavorable comparison yeah. because like it's because that shouldn't be fit. here no that shouldn't be in this i mean just if i can say something about a leather face like i just came off watching 1974 Texas chainsaw massacre last night and rather leather face is relentless this is more like halloween more yes. like mike myers creeping around slowly doing stupid shit not making sense like yeah. i'm talking about the the halloween requels by the way yes like just poorly done like you have to have leatherface chasing people with chainsaws to the death yeah and throwing them up on meat hooks like immediately like you can't have him just kind of like crawling around a house it just it it's just not, pissed me off yeah just pissed me off it's not where we needed to be but there's a bit of rain that that blows into town and rains on this uh, influencer block party. So they take it inside the bus and they have a little party bus in there. 
And from the second they start partying in this like black lit party bus area, you just know Leatherface is going to end up on, on the party bus. Yeah. And they take such, Lucas is so riveted, they take such <laughs> contrived strides to get him on that bus. Like people do a chain reaction of the stupidest things. They open the bus door. The bus driver gets out for no reason. No reason. And then his head flies back into the bus. And before you know it, Leatherface is on the bus. He, I'm not going to call this a salad dragon because the scene just, it's not cool. No, it's not even a crouton. It's just, no. it's, it's just, we thought we wanted it, but we didn't. It's just, you know what it is? It actually kind of reminded me of um, Friday the 13th. Part, part seven yeah. jason goes to manhattan eight oh, eight sorry yes. where they're all on the party boat yep. going to manhattan yes. yes and then you think it's gonna be fucking awesome because jason and not. then it's like not no. yeah it, it's this all over again yeah. it reminded me of jeepers creepers too with all the high schoolers stuck on a bus with a creature I, stalking I and jeepers killing creepers. them he goes <laughs> leatherface goes into the party area of the bus and instantly all the influencers just instinctively raise their phones to start recording him or live streaming him. Oh, oh, and and oh. the dude, the mm. main dude says, try anything you cancel, bro. Wow. Oh. And he tries something and he cancels <laughs> them with his chainsaw. And he just, Bravo. he just cuts everybody up. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to do it, have the music pumping. Yeah, it is so joyless. It's you need a joyless. needle drop. You need a yeah. you need a huge you need the biggest <clears throat> needle drop that you could afford. Wap. You, <laughs> yeah, you need Put something. Your whole budget into it. You need something hilarious. You need like eyes without a face. Yes. No. Yeah. Oh, oh man, I was gonna that, say like be great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Party rock. What? What's it? Oh, LMFAO. LMFAO. Yeah. You need LMFAO. Yes. Yeah. Just just LMFAO for the rest of the movie. Just, oh just fucking slather it. But alas, it's just kind of, you know, grinding score as he as he dispatches everybody. And then we're just left with the two sisters and our original survivor woman from the original coming back. And her confrontation with Leatherface is so frustrating. Oh, she has a shotgun. She's all badass. They set her up as just being the ultimate she's Laurie got, Strode. She's got Sarah a Connor. pig when we meet her. And and she and we learned that since the original confrontation, she's become a Texas Ranger. I'm like, wait, we did. Yeah. Oh. She became a Ranger to try and catch Leatherface like that was like. That yeah yeah that, I think that was like I literally that was, literally on, that was her hat that was I, like some gift shop thing where I she was like that. yeah and so I'm like oh shit she's a Texas Ranger in the legendary tradition of Chuck Norris Texas <laughs> Ranger she's gonna come and like fuck shit up yes which oh, yeah. I was like it's all on the one up. hand she's I was like five oh, decades great. like this. which to me would have been much better than how it turned out yeah. I mean whatever it's in the model of Laurie Strode in the new Halloween but. It would have been much better than what happened. She has the shotgun trained right at his head. He's sitting on a bed, just waxing nostalgic about his mommy. And she doesn't pull the trigger. She just says a bunch of bullshit. He walks right past her. He walks out. He goes outside. And then as he's putting the other girls in danger, she runs out and starts shooting him as if like what, what changed? You're just out in the rain now. You're just under the rain machine, so it's more dramatic now. It's like, is bad that blocking. Yeah, it's really yeah. bad blocking. Yeah. And it's so weird because, like, there's all this stuff where, you know, she beckons the girls into her car and is like, stay in here. But then she's like, I'm going to use you as bait. So she, ha she has this ruthlessness about her, clearly. She's yeah. wanting to put these two girls in danger. But... Oh, Leatherface is having a sad moment, so I can't shoot him she in the She still face. has him dead to rights, and she doesn't do anything. So we're not on her side. We're not on anybody's side. I was on Leatherface's side pretty much 100% yeah. of the time. I'm like, yeah. slice with wild abandon, Leatherface. Please. And then, when she, and then when she does have her moment where she's like listing off the names of the of the victims. Yes. And then she's like, say my name. And then she misses. She goes to fire and she misses. Uh, Leatherface doesn't talk. 
He doesn't talk. He doesn't she, talk. She's like, say my name. Oh, you don't remember me? I'm like, he's given you no indication either way. That he has a brain. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> just could be like mental no, illness. No, yeah, you don't no know your name. name. It's it's just the whole movie is joyless and frustrating. And that's not what you want in something like this. Like people are coming to this for a thrill. They yeah. Want a good it, requel. It would have been a it would have been a way cooler showdown if Laurie Strode, or excuse me, uh Sally Hardesty like creeped in on Leatherface <laughs> with her shotgun, not her AR-15, but a shotgun. And like had him dead to rights and you think she's going to shoot him. And then like she drops the shotgun and then reveals that we haven't seen behind her back, like her own chainsaw. Sure. And she's like yeah. fighting chain with chain, you know, and it's like chain it's on like chain. Mandy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Chain gang. I mean, Andy took it there already, but like <clears throat> give us something. Well, like, Phantasm too took it there before Mandy. But anyway, yeah. Lucas, was that just, was that just a library, right though? Lucas, you were talking a lot about a library, so, right? So yeah, you got so, one. It's a library, right? <laughs> Do it live. I'll write it and we'll do it live. So yeah, the, the movie actually inspired it or triggered it because like, yeah. First Trigger you, warning. Yeah. At first you think it's just these kids just driving cross country or coming to a ghost town or whatever. But then it's like, <laughs> we've got to get this Confederate flag down because our bus of investors is pulling up. Yep. That's all part of the movie. And then when I was realizing that this is contemporary and this is like 50 years later and this takes place, you know, now... I was like, man, the original idea that Toby Hooper got for the original Texas Chainsaw was he was at a department store during Christmas time and it was packed. There was like tons of shoppers like shoulder to shoulder and he was feeling a little like agoraphobic or a little like claustrophobic or whatever. And he like randomly it was like in a Sears or something and walked by a hardware section that had like a Black & Decker chainsaw and he thought, man, if I just got that chainsaw. I could like do some damage or get out of this mall and yeah. like, boom, that was like that. The premise was born from that little seed. And here I was like, oh man, South by Southwest. Imagine a huge, like Terrence Malick, <laughs> like Knight of Cups festival where you're shooting like real footage, real B roll of real people. And then you kind of cheat. You like you cut into the carnage, and and it's like let's say I don't know how you contrive it so Leatherface somehow wanders into South by, but like <laughs> that would be baller, right? Instead of a party and bus, how it's did like, he it's, get it's, the, it's, it's, the full pass? <laughs> <laughs> he wore the guy's face. He wore the security's <laughs> face. Yeah, they're doing retinal scanning now, so he just crams his <laughs> eyeball into his own socket. But yeah, I basically thought drop Leatherface into South by Southwest uh, yeah. Film and Music Festival and you're yeah. on to something. If you're going to kill cool. hipsters, send them right into South by Southwest. You can still have a party bus. Yeah. Damn. And and then you can make it meta where the Sally Hardesty, Laurie Strode character, they like someone has done a documentary yeah, on yeah, her yeah. and the documentary is like premiering. So Leatherface yeah. is and like killing people and while, John while, there, yeah, while like narration. original footage is brought like projecting like the, the matrix resurrections, you know, when they walk can, into the room and it's like, projecting. I, can we have the podcasters from the uh, Halloween? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. On love. yes. It also functions as a prequel <laughs> origin story to their podcast. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. And I, I they're running the Q&A with Sally Hardesty. Yes. yes. And, they, and they get podcasts from Ghostbusters Afterlife. <laughs> yes. This is more of a comment than a question. <laughs> I have yeah. a two-part question. Leatherface just steps up to the, like, the microphone, just like plays his like, chainsaw onto the microphone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's get to these chainsaw bones. Let's see. Brother Ben, you are first to bone. Oh, first to bone. First to bone. Uh, yeah, this one is really weird because <laughs> it is. What, what did you say, Brother Bishke? It's it's 83 minutes long. Yeah, 83. <laughs> I mean, exactly. It is 83 minutes long. Yeah. And it simultaneously felt like 10 minutes long because just. Yes. I can't <laughs> woof it. I can't, can't do woof it. it. Because of that first kill sequence, sure, I get it. I I see glim glimmers of something there. Yeah, but this is largely largely worthless. Yeah, but I can't. I cannot woof it for that first kill. Glimmers of a better movie. We should just call from our Dune Lodgecast flashes of Zendaya. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the flashes of Zendaya. Yes. <laughs> flashes of Zendaya. 
So I, I'm, I'm going to give it half a bone. Half a bone. Half a bone. Roger Ebert Memorial. I hate it, hate it, hated this movie. All right. Half a bone from Brother Ben. Mm, Brother Lucas, lay waste. Uh, I was just sitting here thinking more on like other possible alternate live rewrites. And <laughs> He's fully I, I, in the I, zone. I, I think I came up with something a little more compelling to me at least. Oh more, shit! More dramatic. Here we go. A double live rewrite. Do it live. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. So double live. the lead of the movie should have been the eighth grade Gucci uh, actress whose name I forget. Sure, Elsie Fisher. Thank you. And it should have been written into the story uh, canon mm. that she's Sally Hardesty's uh, granddaughter. Sure, why not? And what's interesting is that when you watch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which was the uh, direct sequel that Toby Hooper made himself because Canon Films paid him like a million dollars back in 1986 when that meant something. It's a lot of cocaine. Yeah, he was like, I'm not going to make a horror movie. I'm going to make a satire. And like no one really got that until like way after the fact. So in part two, the opening scrawl <laughs> says it, it recaps the first film. And yeah. it says Sally Hardesty was found blood caked and babbling crazy about like a house of horrors that she barely escaped from. And then she slips into catatonia. Right. So I would open the film with the eighth grade girl having to go say goodbye to her grandmother, who's now convalescing in hospice on her deathbed, hasn't spoken in 50 years. Okay. And the family, you know, leaves the room to go get a sandwich or a Coke at the vending machine. Have a Coke and a smile. And all of a sudden, grandma's w muttering something, whispering something. It's like the death rattle, right? And and she tries to like call people back to the room, but she knows time is is short. So she leans forward and, and, and it's like Sally Hardesty just muttering one word. Rosebud? Uh, Harlow, the name of the town where 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 it all went down, right? And and yeah. so the family comes back. Grandma's passed away. Did she say anything? Granddaughter's like, nope, didn't say anything. But then she goes home, does a little light research, Starts gets a, a podcast, gets a yeah, gets a bunch of her friends who are podcasters <laughs> to go investigate <laughs> what her dead grandmother got mixed up in or whatever, and maybe this will you know add clarity or something so they, they yeah, return leave, leave the real estate shit out of yeah, it that's they, what i was gonna say this is tracking way more than opening great. a fucking restaurant yeah this they they great. open they yeah they 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 do an investigation they go back to the scene of the crime the original and they find and, a geriatric leather face yes yeah, yeah and they find like the clean eastwood leather face like a leather face oh, who's fuck who's like yeah. mass doesn't fit yeah. well anymore like yeah. he's falling off because he's so gaunt and yeah. he's got gout and he's like just not well or maybe he's in a wheelchair like like or Franklin who he killed in the first or it's Franklin's wheelchair that is using from the yeah. first one. Oh, you yes. know, you really can just go deep with it. Deep. And that shows a love for the source material that this shows none of. More love in the last minute than this whole movie yes. had. Yes. So That's I'll true. give it one bone because oh, it's it's whoa. a concept like the Texas Chainsaw. You're IP. getting high off your own rewrites. Yeah, for that it's one bone. it's worth it's worth giving a chance. And this movie is so bad it makes me want to not only revisit Leatherface, which was the third film, and then the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Next Generation, as the fourth film, and then all the other ones I That's missed. That's the one with McConaughey and Zellweger. Yes, which yeah, I guess was supposed to be a horror movie, but but <laughs> it wasn't very scary or funny or whatever. But yeah, I just feel like you, you really need uh, a Kevin Feige like maestro to oversee the the Texas you Chainsaw that universe. Cinematic Universe. Yeah, you want it? That's a full bone from the hothead. All right, brother Josh, let's go down to Texas <sighs> by way um, of Bulgaria. I think by and large, this movie is just unwatchable. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as I said before, like I'm so sick and tired of overwrought messages. Yes. This also just had a level of meanness to it mm -hmm. as well, especially with the angle. Like I couldn't get a good grasp on the politics of it all. The politics were really kind of weird in it. Like the, the mechanic, uh, contractor guy, like you don't, are we, is he a hero? Like, yeah. where is he coming from? Like what? <sighs> yeah and then, then 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 there's this weird like you know like oh we love our town and we love our like rural texas stuff and you know i get it preserving community from like 
this kind of gentrification, all that stuff. Like I get it. But at 83 minutes, it's always going to be undercooked. Yeah. <laughs> so why even go in that direction? Yeah. And it just like felt really sour to me. And then the whole trying to reinvent Leatherface as this kind of, again, like misunderstood um, orphan Michael Myers character. <laughs> where it's like, Oh, he's like, you know, he, he revives at the end, even despite them watching him drown basically, yeah. which also don't, if you have, <laughs> don't a, cha- do if you have a chainsaw, <laughs> don't just like scrape the guy in the face, maybe like plunge it into him and just let it run for like a couple minutes. I don't know. That's what I would <laughs> Those do. Those are some hot Josh. Tips. Um, and, th- and then like the school shooting stuff, which is such a, bummer to Unnecessary. me. Unnecessary. Just everything just felt like, I don't know. I was just, I just felt bummed out by that movie. Like I get yeah. it. We got some glee from that kill at the beginning. But then again, <laughs> it was in service of this weird gentrification, like yeah. narrative that was going through it. And it just wasn't satisfying. And I, I love the first film so much. I yeah. think it's such a perfect it's horror pure. movie. It's pure. Because there's no backstory. There's no nothing. You don't get any explanation of anything. It's just like murder, mayhem, insanity. And then it's done. Yeah. It's done and out. And you and, get it. And so this movie's a wolf. Woof. Wow. That's I a, just, there's nothing, wolf. there's, there was nothing for me at the end of the day. I just think I, I, I can't, it. it's just, it's a wolf. Hey, it's I terrible. get it. I get it. Brother Bishki, you yeah. have, you the have trickster. a little, you have a little skin in this, uh, you have a little leathery skin in this game after just watching. Yeah. Just the watching the one. It had been numbered many years since I've seen the original and, uh, it still holds up. I'd say three and a half bones is I think the low budgetness to the original is a key to it. Oh yeah. The gra- oh, yeah. the graininess, the grittiness, the barbecue, the Texasness. The sound design the, is amazing. The, yeah. The actual Texasness. The actual Texasness, which I did not feel in this movie at all. It was, was like, legitimately hot in the first film. Yes, it like was it was hundreds hot. of degree. You could hear the Texas radio in the background all the time. Like yeah. it was just solid. And once Leatherface shows up, it just goes nuts for the rest of the film this is different and <laughs> much worse and i don't know we've covered it here it's just it's the only thing i like about it is 83 minutes yes so for that i will give you the for giving it the exact runtime of the original film <laughs> yes i will give you the roger ebert memorial half bone boom if you, if you went 10 minutes longer you'd get a wolf but you gave us 83 minutes and that's all you get yeah i mean <sighs> Lucas's live rewrites, they always they always put things in perspective. It's like if you just tried a little harder, you could have come up with an angle that wasn't allergic to to quality. That like none of this was scary in the least. No. It was gross. It was gross. Yeah. Like when she's under the floorboards and he slices through a sewage pipe and covers her in shit. Oh. Mm. Why? But it's not f- fun you're not screaming and laughing as much as you should be we screamed together when something was gross and when the dude gets his knee hit with a sledgehammer and Mm. his leg bends the wrong way that was interesting like the arrival aliens yes (laughs) but then as leatherface is just pounding his face into a literal pulp what are we supposed to do with that like Mm. it's not dialed in right the fun isn't there and I also have to go with a Roger Memorial half bone. I can't go woof though, because that first kill is so sweet. That's right. Oh, it's such a flash of Zendaya. And, <laughs> and there should have been more of it. And I don't know what they're going to do with this. Are they going to sequel this requel? Like, what are they going to do? Prob- Dude, prob- Im- ima- imagine every sequel just being in that same Bulgarian ghost town where it's uh, like the same location. Harlow. You know, Back to Harlow. Oh where it's just like they, they, it, we, they use rain last time. So I don't know how they'll dress it snow. differently. Yeah. Maybe snowing. there'll be more sunflowers. Oh, I mean, actually legit Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the snow. Would Why be not? Cool. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Throw any, any new twist at this and it would have been better than what it is. But also I I just realized like going back to the original and going back again to all these like new ones, I realized in all these older ones and especially the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's a healthy level of camp to all of it. Sure. Like it just campy, kitschy, like kind of jokey, especially with the family. Yeah. Like that Mm -hmm. family is so like, you know, just like, you know, backwater stereotypes that are so like, 
over the top. Uh, and I, I don't get any of that in, in this, you know, it was a real no. turning point for me in my cinematic upbringing. When I remember I was at a twins game with my uncle, my uncle Craig, what's up, Craig. Yeah. And he kind of blew my mind a little bit. Cause I, I was buzzing off of the deer hunter at the time. And I was telling him how great the deer hunter was and how it was my favorite film. It's the best film ever made. Whoa. And he's like, you know what? When you're older, you're going to look at that movie and you're going to think to yourself, the director was an asshole and it's a bad movie. Wow. I'm like, (laughs) I was like, excuse me? Excuse me. And he also told me, because I told him I had just seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he's like, that's a hilarious movie. And I'm like, are you, are you fucking with me, uncle? (laughs) Like, that is the most fucked up movie I've ever seen. He's like, it's funny. Look at it. It's a comedy. And he just blew my mind. I was like, okay. So when I watched it again, I was like, this is funny. I allowed myself to laugh and it was even better. So love and yeah, light to love Craig. Craig. Love Craig, and light to Craig. Yeah. True. Craig, prescient. And I also Age brings wisdom. It is funny. I also played him graffiti bridge on my Walkman on the way to the game. And he said it was bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, well, his deer hunter take wasn't necessarily right. Either. Yeah, he, he was giving me a lot to think about is the key. And Texas Chainsaw as a comedy is the way to look at it. And aside from the influencer saying, try anything and you're canceled. This isn't a comedy in the least. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you fucked up. You fucked up. I would have liked to have seen the original vision of this, whatever that was. But I assume, mm. I assume it wasn't much better. I want all the Lucas live rewrite <laughs> to exist in this cinematic universe to yes. come to life. Run every single Texas Chainsaw property. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, Brother Ben and Brother Josh, thank you so much for going down to Texas with us. Yeehaw! I guess it was a pleasure. Howdy, yeah. howdy, howdy. Uh, well, we did it together. Remember, yeah. Yeah. The real, 1 a.m. The real Texas chainsaws were the ma- ones we massacred along the way. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, love and light to that. Vroom, vroom. Murder, mayhem, insanity, and then it's done.